Welcome back to Indie Ween, Bones and Ghouls. It's that time of year where we rack up a bunch of spooky indie games for the spooky season, and all of them together will cost less than that of a single AAA title. I gotta be honest, it's a cakewalk this year. We're swimming in awesome indie titles to play, and it's a much better price than 60 70 or even the 80 or $90, because everything is pain now in the AAA space. However, over on the indie front, things are going so well, I'm making this video a double feature in adding an extra game because the original lineup of Indie Ween this year didn't even break $50. But first, rather than waste your time with some ad read for something that you just don't need, with the Steam Next Fest well wrapped up by now, there are quite a few new cool demos that you can try out for free right now, including a new demo for Parapedia, Imprisoned Hyperion 2, and a game I've been talking about quite a bit this spooky season called Sorceress. All of these are neat immersive sims that you can take for a whirl right now, and and Sorceress in particular is a love letter to Dark Messiah, complete with kicking dudes off ledges or into conveniently placed spiky walls. Sorceress is currently running a Kickstarter to help the team get the funds they need to develop the game, and if the demo is to your liking, I'd like to ask you check that Kickstarter page out. The link's down below. Oh yeah, and before I forget to tell you all, I am indeed very aware of Fortune's Run, I just gotta get through Indie Ween and the Alone in the Dark 2008 video first. Now for today's double feature, we've got Pigsaw and Chop Guy. You've probably heard of at least one of these games by now since it's a Shemansky title, but both are cute little games that cost less than a pair of energy drinks at the gas station each and are a great time. Pigsaw is a game by one Christopher Yobsley, who you might remember from that cool Dread XP game with the trapdoor rifle, the fruit, and in Pigsaw you play as a human in a slaughterhouse who is, unfortunately, not employed there. You have one goal, get out. The game is short but surprisingly in-depth with its mechanics allowing for stealth, out loud shooting, or even just running like hell as you get through the slaughterhouse, with the world record sitting at about 5 minutes and change according to speedrun.com. On the other end, Chop Goblins is a silly little boomy shooter made by David Shemansky, who after doing Dusk, helping with Gloomwood, and making Iron Lungs so that Markiplier could make a movie about it, sneezed on a keyboard and created this game. You play as some guy who felt a little naughty, so he snuck into a museum and accidentally unleashed an army of cheese-loving goblins upon all of time and space. Somehow, they all have knives. This is your problem now. Welcome to Pigsaw. You have no armor or bodily protection of any kind, and the floor is kinda slippery. You can hear the patter of your bare feet as you run like hell through the game because even if you can manage to swipe that shotgun early on, the pigmen can effectively kill you in about two and a half hits, assuming you are at 100% HP, and while you can one-shot them with a shotgun if you're good, there are more pigmen than there are shells in-game, and you don't exactly have a large inventory space. Your best bet is often to run, hide, or some combination of the two. There's no serious objectives in the game aside from get to the next room and hopefully get out of here. And frankly, it works well in this scenario. I had quite a time not only stealthing through Pigsaw, but also playing a sort of control key is broken run, where unless I absolutely had to in order to progress, I did not crouch at all and instead chose violence or running every time. This isn't necessarily killing every pig butcher or security turret that I saw, but it was a hell of a lot of fun charging through maps and vaporizing piggies as I ran. I think I might try a ghost run too, or maybe trying to save all the humans in that last area as that's a track stat. The spookies in Pixar come from, well, you're in a giant people slaughterhouse, including massive industrial vats that are boiling down god knows what and saws where people are processed into canned meat for someone's consumption. If that's not really doing it for you alongside the buzzsaw handled pigmen, I really don't know what to tell you. There are some strange things here and there that maybe hint at more things going on outside of the two optional secrets to find in game, but Pixar keeps it tightly focused on the whole you'd best get out of here before you end up in one of those cans theming. So like I was talking about a second ago, while it's maybe not a full-blown immersive sim, Pixar does accommodate multiple playstyles, and there's a surprising amount of emerging gameplay for a game that doesn't even bother to have a save system thanks for it taking less than an hour to complete a run. Don't worry, there is a solid checkpoint system for when you get own zoned by the saw thing, but stealth is pretty straightforward. Try to stay out of the pig's line of sight and uh, try to hide. Things get a little hard though as you wind up in a lot of open areas that don't have clear sneaky paths like we all just get so used to in games, but instead are basically just like, oh yeah, just 
follow the pattern and hopefully they don't turn around and see you. But there are some options if you do get found out. One of them, which I'm rather fond of, is that you can pick up and chuck any of the barrels laying around the facility and hitting a pigman with a barrel will stagger it, giving you just enough time to run the hell away to find a new hiding place. You can also stack the barrels to get around certain obstacles without triggering a switch if you're sly. Shooting is well, shoot it. But remember that these guys can take you out in two hits or less. Uh, you want a story analysis? Okay, it's a 45 minute game, but here you go. You are a human trapped in a pig slaughterhouse. That is to say that you are going to be processed into meat and other commodities by the pig people. You work up the courage to escape the kill floor and get out. The end. There might be a few things I missed here and there, but that's all you really need to know. The game is $4.99 on Steam when it isn't on sale, and frankly, by all accounts, it is better for you than going to get that two for five energy drinks at the gas station. And now for something a little sillier, Chop Goblins. Chop Goblins is about as straightforward as it comes where gameplay is concerned with only a few conveniences such as your melee always being equipped and a right click or press of the E key away at all times. Your enemies in Chop Goblins are the Chop Goblins, but there's just enough variety to keep things going and each level you'll get a new baddie to shake things up. You start with the basic goblin and the green goblin who has learned to throw its knife at you, which is fairly straightforward stuff, but then things get spicy with Granny Goblin who screams insults at you that hit scan and your only defense is to either get out of line of sight or stagger her. Then we've got Dracula's pet cats because that's a thing, the big tanky goblin that throws 10 axes at once, and the cyber goblins which are pretty much just the green goblins with RGB. To handle these threats you get your knife along with a suite of very fun weapons that are all just dressed up traditional weapons into more absurd versions of what you'd normally get. Like instead of a pistol, you get a flintlock that will pierce enemies like two or three times over, or the wand that lets you cast shift delete on 10 goblins at a time instead of say a plain old rocket launcher. And of course, this wouldn't be a throwback to the so-called boomer shooters if there weren't a ton of little secrets to find. From secret switches to hidden platforms just below a critical path, and all their sorts of blink and you'll miss it stuff, Secrets are everywhere. Secrets always have something useful in them, and sometimes it's just a bit of extra health. Sometimes it's being able to get the mid-game assault rifle analog, the Impaler, within the first 10 seconds of the opening of the game instead of the about halfway point of the game. Sure, this inadvertently leads to a lot of scanning every last inch of every wall looking for a button or something you need to press down on, but it's still good fun. As for the spookies, well, it's really more silly than spooky. Everything about Chop Goblins is a wink and a nod between David and the player that we all know that this is probably the silliest thing we have shot our way through unless you've recently played Egg Wife. And we're just here to have a fun time with it. The music is a bunch of bouncy, upbeat tracks on each level. The text between levels is more and more absurd each time. And the goblins all say silly things in their silly voices like asking where all the cheese they were promised is or knife related puns. Me personally, I'm always down to get a little silly. It's kind of like the silliness of modern day interpretations of Duke Nukem, except instead of being a 150% testosterone being, it's literal goblins terrorizing all of time and space like this was some sort of Gremlins 2 2. I guess I should start talking about plot details now. So there is a story in Chop Goblins, mostly told through the in-between level text, which outlines the plot as follows. Uh, spoilers, I guess. In the mid 80s, you've got nothing better to do, so you break into a museum and accidentally open a box that contained an endless army of evil goblins, and all the goblins have knives. It's cool though, because you've got a knife too, and finally you have something to do this weekend. The goblins terrorize the museum, then they escape and terrorize the whole city, literally chopping entire buildings down with their knives and going joyriding in other people's cars. You deal with this, but then it turns out the goblins are also masters of time and space, and they open a portal to Dracula's castle, where you have to fight the big man himself while he sings his goofy song at you. And frankly, I'm down for singing Dracula to replace Big John as the meme character across all New Blood and New Blood adjacent games. Ashri can still do it if he wants, but singing Dracula needs to be a thing. The goblins then go to ancient Greece to try to find the Staff of Corinthians, but you get there first and learn the power of shift deleting squaffs of goblins in a single wave of your new magic wand. Frustrated at their repeated failures, the goblins
Goblins Go to the Far Future, where we never got Gloomwood's final release because the cyberpunk goblins took over the Earth. You shoot the cyber goblin in his stupid face and everything gets fixed before you get an end screen that says that everything was put back to normal except for that the box all the goblins came out of is still open. Time for New Game Plus. So after you beat the game, you're allowed to play once again mode, which is basically a sort of diet NG plus because you start the game with all your weapons and upgrades that you have collected. And yes, there are a couple of weapon upgrades and chop goblins, but they are very hard to find. Of course, there's a hard mode to try out, which is something you can do from the start. But even after playing a single round on the intended difficulty, it's uh, quite a challenge. Then there's Nilbog mode. Hey, reference. Which mirrors the whole game like it's a Mario Kart track. It's a nice little shakeup on the game without getting too wild with things, because it's good to remember that in spite of the stellar quality of Chop Goblins, it's still just a silly little game David Shemansky put out essentially for fun or because he could. I do not know the machinations of that man. All I know is that he is very good at video games. A run through this game can take less than an hour, but the combat is just rock solid. The game is highly replayable, and it's only five bucks for this, making it again a better choice than two for five animals energy drinks at the gas station. So, final thoughts on both of these games? They're great, I love them. They're not long experiences, but they're highly replayable, fast paced, and are all around a lot of fun in their own rights, with Pigsaw being a great MSIM light, and Chop Goblins being a short, sweet love letter to boomer shooters. Personally, I'd go with Pigsaw over Chop Goblins, as that's more my thing with stealth and stacking boxes and all the like. But the real winner between these two games really depends on your own personal preference. If you like pure shooters, or something with a bit less focus, but more variety. You really can't go wrong with either game though, or you could just get both of these because it'd be less than the price of a single trip through the drive-thru, which God, I remember when those beefy crunch burritos at Taco Bell were only 69 cents. They're almost $3 now. What the hell? So to catch everyone up on the total so far, we started with Alyssa at $17.99, added Endoparasitic for $9.99 for a total of $27.98, and now with Pigsaw and Chop Goblins at $4.99 a piece, we are at a total of four games for $37.96. The hint for next week's game is that it'll bring us to a total of... Actually, I'm not sure because uh, it's gonna come out of early access and the price might change, but it's a game we covered in Indie Week a couple years ago that I'm really excited is finally getting its full release. We'll definitely be under the $70 price limit though, and most likely still under $60, even with the addition of Chop Goblins, which I wasn't planning. I just realized I had that in my library and was like, oh yeah, this is awesome. I should add this. And real quick, I almost forgot to mention this, but if you do end up picking up either of these games, particularly Pigsaw, something you can do that also really really helps out the developers is leave a review if you like the game. Pigsaw currently has a 100% positive rating, however it cannot attain any ranking in Steam or whatever they do to suggest games to people because there's only 9 ratings on it so far. So if you liked it, make your voice heard, that way uh, Steam can do whatever weird algorithm stuff Steam does so that more people can get a chance to check out Pigsaw. And that'll do her for today. Let's do our sign up. Remember that no matter what you do, be it making music with guitars or spoons on a bucket, painting portraits or painting decals onto your car, or whatever it might be that you do, what you do is not content, it's art. Content is a word that has been twisted to mean a way to grind up all the skills, passions, and ideas that you have gathered through the course of your life and grind them up into a gray slurry meant for mindless consumption by an uncaring mob, all for the benefit of some boardroom that will never know your name. Content is anathema to all artistic pursuits, and you are not deserving of being belittled down to content. Remember that your art is a reflection of you by the very nature of its creation, and you are worth fighting for. You are not content. So fight for your art by fighting against the contentification of, well, everything these days. Stay saucy, everyone. Look at this boy all spread out and relaxing in the sun. He is quite long. He is quite rude. You kept us up all of last night just screaming at the air conditioner. Do you have anything to say for yourself? You bit mommy when she was trying to just get up and go to the bathroom last night. In almost the exact same spot you bit her last night. Just 
sitting there flicking your tail as if you haven't done anything wrong on the empty yogurt box that you seem to like better than all the others. Look at these little, you're even doing violence on the box. All this belly fluff is just holding your violence glands. Sir. Sir. Oh, you think? Oh, yeah. I'm, I've got tougher skin than mommy. You can't actually p break my skin. That's why daddy handles you. Scritch. Surprisingly receptive. All right. I'll leave you alone now, but you got to promise me that you're going to be better tonight.